Okay, so let's just have a class. And uh, everybody will be receiving three fact sheets. And we're going to do three jobs, but it won't take too long today. First of all, you're going to have the fact sheets, which is called dilution technique. And I have been listed all the diagram for you, how we do the dilution. And there is a sum of the quiz, the take home practice ex questions at the back. I will move them onto eCampus and become a multiple choice. So you can do it. Is that okay? It's much easier for you to do. Uh, same as you did for the lecture exam and the coming lab exam, okay? So how you do it? Read and you can do it. It's very simple. All the picture right here. So let's do that. You have your plates from last week. Is that right? I'll show you how we're going to do it. So this is what we cost, talk about is count plates, which is actually the bacteria cells there. So first of all, you're going to have your pore plating, spread the plating. I just assure you, you will do by yourself. So let's say this is your pore plating. And this is your spread the plating. You organize those three. And you do this later on, you record it. Now, what is your order? You got the order going through the dilution. So, for example, pore plating, we use 10 to the minus, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, 10 to the sixth. Let's say we use 10 to the five, 10 to the six, 10 to the seven, for example. Okay? You organize it like that. You first look at the place, which is two numerable two counts. We usually write TN, TC. So, for example, 10 to the fourth, these are too much, so we write TN, TC. You look at your plates, not just look at the wall. I just give you an example. Okay, that means it's too numerable to count. Then right here, you may look at 10 to the six, maybe only eight colonies there. This may be only 12 colonies there. These plates, we're not gonna use it because it's not in the range 30 to 300. Remember, this is an acceptable zone. Okay? So, then you're going to find the one place which is in that acceptable zone. That is your first job to do. Let's say, here you have 50. Here you maybe have 30, let's say. So, how are you going to do? It's very easy to do the population. So, the total population equals CFU, colony forming units on the plates, multiplied by the dilution factor. This dilution factor is the final dilution factor of the plates. So very simple. Let's give examples of the above one, which is 50 multiplied by 10 to the fifth. That equals 5 million CFU per ml. What we are doing the unit here is the concentration CFU per ml. Okay, now the spread the plating right here, let's give an example, which is equals 30 multiplied by 10 to the 6, so that equals 30 million CFU per ml. Now, one more thing we usually do. For bacterial population, we usually transfer them to log 10. CFU per ml. Okay, so if you transfer to log 10, this equals pretty much about 6.7 log 10 CFU per ml. And the bottom one is pretty much, if we do log, we will see, let's say log 10, 30. This is pretty much equals uh, 7.4 log 10 CFU per ml. Okay, so we usually transfer them to the log 10. Why we wanted to do that? This is because of the statistics we want sometimes to do the comparison. So you know that 
Let's say we have a two group number. We have group one. All right. Let's say we have a group one and a group two. Okay, let's say group one, I have this number. Group two, I have two, three, four. There is no way you compare the statistic difference between these two groups. It will not show any difference because the standard deviation here, we call its error, is too large. So in order to solve the problem, what we do, we transfer these two log 10. Therefore, this equals 4. If we become log 10 here, this equals 5. And if we become log 10 here, this equals how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, equals 6. Therefore, you actually comparing it is 4 log, 5 log, and 6 log. This is the one we can control this arrow. This arrow can be controlled very well. Okay, so that's why for the bacteria, for this large population, most of the time we change them to the log 10. Now this is something mass you should know. For example, 10 to the x equals 10. This equals x equals 1. 10 to the x equals 100. This x equals 2. Then we become log 10. That's y equals 1. That's log 10, 10 to the second. That's equals 2. Okay, you should know about this. Now, of course, if it's an uneven number, it's like a 200, 300, you can use a calculator to do the calculation. Or using Excel sheet in the computer to do. So just let, let you know. Uh, bacteria population, we transfer them to the log 10. Okay? Now, there is some of the debate regarding... Let's say E. coli 0157H7 in the ground beef has to be zero, torus, which means you cannot find one cell there. At that scenario, we don't use log because we want to make sure there's no one cell there. Okay, so, but most of the time when you calculate the population, we use, we use log 10. Okay, so this is something I want to mention. You can do this only by yourself on your notebook. Okay, so then we're gonna move on to today's work. Today we're gonna to do two jobs. Number one is uh, bacterial media. Number two, we will do the impact of the temperature for the bacteria growing. So I think these two are very interesting and a very important work to do. Uh, we have not been mentioned about the bacterial media yet. We do mention in the examination one, if you still remember, there's a slide to talk about the bacteria media. Talk about support media, enriched media, and differentiated media. I said those are a little bit com complicated and a little bit difficult concepts. So we do this lab, you will understand very well, okay? So we're gonna talk about bacteria media. Okay, so here we will talk number one, is support media. Support media, which means support most bacteria grow. Most bacteria grow. So give you an example, tropic soil broth, TSB, tropic soil agar, and nutrient broth. Neutron agar. Those most of the bacteria will grow. Only the bacteria not growing there is called a fastidious bacteria. So no fastidious bacteria grow. Let's say Haemophilus influenza and the, for example Neisseria gonorrhea. Those will not grow. But the most of the bacteria, E. coli, Salmonella, it will grow. Second, we call it selective media. So what is selective media? Which means it contains certain ingredients. Which means it's favor a group of bacterial growth. Others will be inhibited.
So I give you a very example, easy example. Let's say I have a tropic soil agar. I add penicillin. If I add penicillin, what kind of the bacteria will grow? Only penicillin resistant bacteria grow. Because penicillin will kill most of the bacteria. So only penicillin resistant bacteria will grow. This median, we call it selective median. Okay? But I have to be a little bit cautious. Selective median is not that uh, defined, which means it's not that absolutely selective. Does not mean this is a selective media, so only that bacteria will grow, other bacteria are not going to grow. The reason is, we only know 5% of the bacteria among the total bacteria in the world. There is a 95% of bacteria we don't even know. So selective media is just a concept, it's relatively selective. Does not mean it's safe, it's 100% safe. Does not mean it's very, very selective. It's relatively only, okay? So this is a good example for you. Now number three, we call it enriched media. Enriched media, for example, blood agar. That's an enriched media, which means it's containing 5% sheep blood. Now, why they use 5% sheep blood? Because in 1970, they think about the 5% sheep blood is very similar to the human being blood. That's why they use 5% sheep blood. Now, for blood agar, they can grow dramatically. So the bacteria, they grow dramatically, which means they grow more than in TSA because of the sheep blood. The blood has lots of nutrition. Now this is also a differentiated media. Why is it a differentiation media? Because we can determine the bacteria based on the biochemistry reaction. Basically is the color. Is the color change. So for example, blood agar, we could be have alpha hemolytic beta hemolytic and the so-called non-hemolytic which is gamma hemolytic okay this is based on how they hydrolyze or hemolyzing blood cell so those are the examples now it seems very easy but what is the different difficulty here is it's lots of the time a bacterial media is a good combination of two of them or three of them. That's why sometimes it's difficult to understand. So we're gonna give you some of the example there, then you can understand it. Okay, so we will do a test. So today we will introduce some bacteria. Number one we will talk about is Makanghiaga. So everybody, when you look at the Makanghiaga, looks like purple. Why? It's a purple color because it contains crystal violet. This is a dye used for gram stain, if you still remember. That's why it is a purple color. But the crystal violet is a selective ingredient. Because of the crystal violet, only gram negative bacteria grow. The gram positive bacteria will be died. Why? Very simple, crystal violet will be attacking peptidine glycan of gram positive bacteria. So this is attack peptidyl glycan of gram positive bacteria. So Makanki agar is a selective media. Why it is a selective media? Because only 
gram negative bacteria grow, gram positive bacteria will be dying. This is number one. Now number two, Makaki algae also is a differentiated media. You will not see it probably right here. But the ingredients tells you it's a differentiated media because it has lactose. Therefore, if the bacteria is lactose fermentation positive, we write LAC plus. We will show you pink colony. If it's lactose fermentation negative, write as LAC negative, it will be colorless. Colorless colony. Now the question is why? Because the bacteria sometimes going through fermentation process. The fermentation process will generate lactic acid or other acid. Inside of this media, there is a so-called pH indicator. The pH indicator is called a neutral red. Lactic acid, the acid will let neutral red become pink color. So that's why this is a differentiated media. They can differentiate the lactose fermentation positive and negative based on the color of the colon. Now, most of the time, we say Makaki agar, we will be assuming they have lactose. But actually, the first time when you learn, you can say Makaki agar is lactose Makaki. Because sometimes there is a, another Makaki agar called Sorbitol Makaki, which means instead of they have lactose, they have Sorbitol. So just to let you know the difference, I'm not going to go very deeper, but just to let you know, if we just say Makanki agar, it has lactose there, we call it a lactose Makanki actually. In your mind, you can think about it. Okay, so that's Makanki agar, the second one. Now the third, the, the first one, the second one, is called Manitou Salt Agar. Now remember the question of the examination one. Now although it's open book, you can try three times, maybe you just guess, but you should know the story behind that. Remember the question of the exam one? We, t we, uh, we ask you about the manitou salt agar. I'm going to explain to you what is manitou salt agar. So the second one is manitou salt agar. Okay, manitou salt agar is looks like a little bit orange, a little bit red. That's manitou salt agar. This is agar is a selective media. Why it is a selective media? Because of salt. So you should know, lots of the bacteria, they do not like salt. So we call it salt because it will cause osmotic imbalance. Some of the bacteria can survive in the salt solution. What's the name for that? If it can survive more than 0 0.2 mole concentration of salt, we call it a halophile. If it's more than 2 mole salt, we call it extreme halophiles. But most of the bacteria do not like salt, they will be dying. Okay, so in this medium, they have 2% salt. So now, hello file will be died, and only hello file will survive. Okay, so that's a selective medium because of the salt. This is also a differentiated medium. Because of the mannitol. Now mannitol is a sugar. We call it a modified sugar. 
Mannitol could be also happened is mannitol fermentation positive and mannitol fermentation negative. If the bacteria is mannitol fermentation positive, it is a yellow color. If it's mannitol fermentation negative, it is colorless. Now, this median is very important in the clinical area. Remember the three Staphylococcus aureus we mentioned? Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidemis, and the Staphylococcus saprophyticus. If you grow them on the manito salt agar, this will be yellow color. This will be colorless, and this will also be colorless. Because this can do manito fermentation positive. Why Staphylococcus aureus is more important? Because it causes food intoxication. And the Staphylococcus epidemis is normal bacteria on the surface. Saphropheticus is honeymoon bacteria only for sexual transmitted infection. That's why it's an easy, quick test. Now, and so the same question. Why manitol salt positive, manitol fermentation positive will have a yellow color? Because inside of this media, there is another pH indicator called a phenol red. That's a pH indicator. If manitol fermentation positive, the phenol red turns yellow. So that's why it's a yellow color. Okay, the second one for manitol salt agar. So both Macaulay agar and the manitol salt agar are selective media and differentiated media, but depends on the purpose. Okay, so we mentioned these two. Now we're gonna mention blood agar again, just a very brief, very brief. So we're also gonna do a blood agar. You will get a blood agar like this. Very red, looks like a blood. Okay, so number three is blood agar. Now, blood agar is in which media I already mentioned. This is a differentiated media. Because it will have, based on the hemolysis of blood cell, We will have alpha hemolytic, uh, beta hemolytic, and gamma hemolytic. Okay, now by the way, this is 5% sheep blood added into TSA, I just mentioned. Alpha hemolytic is incomplete hemolytic. So it's a dark green color. Beta hemolytic is a transparent zone because it's completely hemolytic. And the gamma hemolytic is nothing happened. So now hemolytic hemolytic. Okay, can you give me an example of which one is alpha hemolytic? Streptococcus ammonia. And uh, very dime streptococcus. That's why we use so called P disc to differentiate that. Is that right? Beta hemolytic, what we have? Streptococcus pyogenes, called strep throat, and streptococcus ag, ag lactia. That's called a GBS. Because infant, newborn baby, meningitis, diarrhea, ammonia, all those things. What is gamma he hemolytic? Enterococcus facile. Okay? So this is something. So we will do our strict plating. Uh, today we will see which bacteria is alpha or beta or gamma hemolytic. Now, I'm going to introduce you another one. We're not going to do, but I'll introduce you. Look at this agar. Brownish turns. This is what we call 
chocolate agar. Now I mentioned it's a joke. Chocolate agar, there is no chocolate there. You should always remember. It's very confusing them. It's not like GSA, you add some chocolate there, it becomes brown, no. There is no chocolate there. The color looks like chocolate. That's why we should say it's a chocolate-like agar. Looks like chocolate, but there's no chocolate. Why it looks like chocolate? Like color because that's a five percent sheep blood. We heated at seventy degrees Celsius. Therefore, it's turned brownish. That's why it looks like chocolate. Now, chocolate agar is very important. Why it is important? It used for growing fastidious bacteria. Now, one of the examples of fastidious bacteria, we mentioned them. Hemophilus influenza, Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay? Neisseria meningitis, all those. For fastidious bacteria, which means the bacteria is very picky. Okay, they need a chocolate agar. Now, chocolate agar, you can also modify, become modified the cyanamide media used to cultivation. Neisseria gonorrhea. Is that right? So, people who have a discharge or itching in the uh, urinary tract, especially female, you get a chocolate agar, you can. Modify the cyanide media, you can direct it to a strict plating. You will see a coffee bean shaped bacteria. After it's grow, use gram stamp that you can identify the person has gonorrhea. That's a very easy, quick test. Okay, so this is what we do the introduction for you. Now, what we will do today's work is, is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. But you will see the results and you have to explain it. Okay, you're gonna get three plates. Which is blood agar, makanki agar, and manito salt agar. Of course, turn back. Then split them into three sections. You have to label your name, bench, whatever date. We will be inoculated three bacteria, which is E. coli, 